to Get a Grip. I'm Alex. And I'm Christian. And this week we'll be talking about different ways to improve your website traffic channels. As I'm sure you guys know, there's a couple different website channels. In this video we'll be talking about organic, direct, paid, referral, social, as well as touching on unassigned traffic. Uh, just kind of discussing what those channels are and a couple different strategies for how you can improve your traffic from those different channels. Having a couple different channels that you get your traffic from is always important. You don't want to hyper-focus on just one channel. You want to make sure that you're pursuing as many of these different avenues as you can. Uh, you know, it's a lot of great, it's a great way to get a lot of different leads, get traffic from a lot of different sources, different types of traffic, uh, just try to capture more of an audience. Uh, we'll also be discussing a little bit more about how to find and track these different channels in GA4 with the upcoming Universal Analytics going away and switching over fully to GA4. Yeah, so it's pretty important for you to look at your traffic breakdown by channels, which is why uh, when you move over completely to Google Analytics 4, you don't want to miss that and you don't want to you know, lose, lose sight of that. So I would say the first piece of information that you need to know is how to find it. And it's actually pretty easy. It's actually easier to find than it was on Universal Analytics. So the moment you hit onto your homepage of GA4, all you have to do is click on the uh, Acquisitions tab on the left side, and there'll be a drop down, and you click on the one that says Traffic Acquisition. And from there, you'll be able to look at um, all of your traffic channels, just like you would on Universal Analytics. I will say it doesn't look exactly the same. There's going to be a little bit of, uh, of you know, uh, change to adjust to. There isn't as much detail like I know in um, in Universal Analytics. You're able to click on each traffic channel and look at where they come from. You can still kind of kind of investigate that in GA4, but it's just not as detailed and there isn't as much uh, information there. But nonetheless, it's still a valuable guide for you to look at traffic breakdown. So our first traffic channel we'll be talking about is organic traffic. Uh, this is a very vital area to focus on. This is typically the traffic channel when you think of like SEO efforts, keywords, all that. So there's a lot that you could say to improve organic traffic and this should always be a primary focus regardless of some of the other traffic channels like paid or social might fluctuate a bit more. You might spend a little less time on paid, you might not do paid, mm -hmm. but organic is something that always needs to have a focus. So. Content keywords is the foundation of improving your organic traffic. Uh, not only making sure that you're having fresh content, regularly updated content, and good content, uh, just getting a little deeper into that, having the right keywords, using keyword research. So using SEO tools, be it just Google Trends, uh, Google Ad Planner, they have the Keyword Planner, um, any of those factors, just doing some more keyword research, be it general keyword volume, uh, competitor analysis are always great, so see who comes up ahead of you organically uh, for whatever page you're trying to show up more for, see what keywords they're using, uh, what kind of content they have, and obviously don't copy it, but kind of make sure you're including the same kind of keywords so you're not missing out on any of those important factors of SEO. There's also a lot of technical SEO factors, just making sure everything on your website, you have your metadata filled out, you have an internal hierarchy, uh, something else that's important in organic traffic that sometimes gets lost in looking over keywords and all of that is having a good internal linking structure. So you want to aim for at least two internal links to every important website or every important page on your website. So making sure you have those links leading to not just a lot of people do the CTA, contact us at the bottom, or hyperlink to their homepage, which is always good, but we want to make sure we're linking to our services, our products, our categories, things like that. It just helps crawlers more easily identify where your important website content is, so it picks it up a little bit faster, and then also helps users kind of guide through your website as well and kind of disperse the traffic throughout your website. So organic traffic, there's a lot you can say about how you can improve it, but the foundation is just good content, regularly updated content, uh, and a lot of research for keywords. We do have a blog on our website called just a beginner's guide to SEO that kind of just walks through some easy steps to take. Uh, like I said, there's a lot you could do with organic. So kind of a lot we can touch on there. Yeah, so and if you're in a, in a pretty competitive industry, a great way to look at this is to look at your more successful competitors and look at what they're doing. You know, if you're a bank, type in banks near me and whoever comes up first, you probably want to do something similar or you want to even do better than them uh, for your SEO efforts so that you can you know, rank, rank above and amongst them. So just look at what other people are doing and try to, 
try and follow the roadmap of success pretty much for yeah. organic traffic. I will say too, one thing we've noticed a lot that helps is obviously some keywords are going to be specific to the exact page you're on and it might not be applicable to use everywhere, but it's always a good idea to have a core set of keywords that you work into every page on your website that's relevant to your just business as an entirety. So you're coming up for those core keywords. So say you're a Western fashion boutique, you want to make sure somewhere on every web page there's a couple iterations of Western fashion, Western style. Uh, just those core keywords you're trying to hit and then obviously one product like a page on dresses might be different than a page on jewelry so you're going to have some keyword variation there but make sure you're hitting on those core keywords that are relevant to your business as an entirety on pretty much every page the next traffic channel we're going to discuss that ties in pretty well with organic traffic is direct traffic so this is people who are finding your website by searching some iteration of your brand name so if someone searched global reach digital marketing global reach internet productions blog things like that where it has our name in it that would be direct traffic or if someone directly types in our website url comes directly that way that would be direct traffic um this type can be a little harder than organic because there's a little bit of less things you can do there but yeah. brand awareness campaigns always help and we tend to notice that as your organic increases your direct kind of increases as well because you know more people are finding you organically so more people are getting familiar with your brand they're seeing your page uh, one thing we always like to focus on for direct traffic is customer retention and customer satisfaction so like we mentioned it kind of ties in with organic traffic as people see you more they start to recognize your brand name when it comes up more maybe they see you on social media maybe they see you in ads start to recognize that name and then once they do get to your website, you want to make sure you're giving them a good customer experience, even if they don't buy anything. So you want your website to be user friendly, easy to navigate, uh, engaging, interesting. And then for those people who do either sign up for a service, contact you, make a purchase, uh, you're making sure that you're giving them a good customer experience. You're following up with them. You're giving them some kind of encouragement to come back, uh, be it a coupon, a discount code, just a follow up email things like that so that you're giving them a good customer experience and then now that they know about your brand they're searching you more directly instead of just stumbling upon you organically so brand awareness campaigns and then also just a really good focus on organic traffic and customer retention all kind of tie together to make a good direct traffic channel yeah it seems like organic traffic uh the best way to increase that is by doing work on your website whereas for direct traffic a lot of it is kind of off-site and off-site efforts you know just something as simple as like like Alex said, brand awareness campaigns or, you know, uh, just working in your brand outside of your website that brings people to your website. That's kind of um, how direct traffic has grown. And uh, it is, I would say, a lot more difficult than organic. But, you know, with the right strategy, it's, it's, it's possible to grow that. The next traffic channel we'll be discussing is paid traffic. So naturally, this is advertisements you pay for online. Naturally, Google Ads is primarily the one we think of here. Uh, there's a lot of different ways you can go with your Google Ads strategy. Uh, not all, not everyone pursues this avenue of traffic. Pretty much everyone does some sort of direct or organic and naturally pretty much social. Uh, those are always kind of the persistent ones. But if you're not really seeing the results you want naturally from organic or direct or social, so you're not, SEO efforts take a while, you're not going to update a page and automatically be on the first page of Google. So sometimes what people like to do is supplement their organic while they're kind of working on that strategy with paid. Uh, so they're coming up sooner for those because you're paying to pop up sooner on the search engines. And then once your organic catches up, they kind of ease back on ads. So we see a lot of different ad strategies and it honestly kind of depends on your industry and your goals for what you want for an ad. So if your primary objective is to get people to call you, you do a call ad. If you want people to do visit your website, you maybe just do a regular display ad. So there's a lot of different things you can do there and you can kind of switch it up by either doing trying for different services or different products, trying different types of ads, seeing what type of ad, what type of keywords are working best. Uh, if you're maxing out your budget really fast and you maybe need to improve it or bid on uh, cheaper keywords, uh, there's a lot of just kind of playing around you can do, but it's a good supplement to direct and organic if it's not performing as high as you'd like. Yeah, uh, we could do a whole video on Google ads, but essentially, uh, it's a little bit of a tricky one. Depending on the industry you're in, it can become very expensive to uh, compete in uh, the ad space and increase your traffic through that. If you're in a very um, you know, uh, competitive industry, uh, a keyword may be you know, $23. Uh, 
as high as that. I've seen um, you know, even higher than that. So that is a little bit tricky, but like Alex said, if you play your cards right, you know, optimize your ads, make sure uh, things are running smoothly, make sure you're running the, the proper types of ads. If you're an e-commerce uh, platform, maybe you want to run product-specific ads, uh, shopping ads, and not just uh, your standard garden variety uh, Google ads. So there are different types of things you can do to switch it up. But I would say uh, paid search, if you are in a position that allows, you know, financially and if you're in the right industry, I think it's a great way to increase that paid side of traffic. And as with always, with every tra traffic channel, we're going to kind of reiterate the importance of organic traffic. Uh, so, you know, organic traffic is that on-page SEO. This ties in with ads. If you have an ad that's leading to a landing page, you obviously want to optimize that landing page. So you want it to have good keywords, strong content, engaging content, uh, be visually appealing. So you want to make sure you're not having people, if they click an ad, go to a web page that's not well set up, not well filled out, just doesn't look good because then you're likely they're going to bounce back so you paid for them to click on that ad and then they're not really enticed once they get there. So make sure you're optimizing the landing pages people are landing on. Uh, one other final note, if your business is a nonprofit, there is a Google Ads grant for nonprofits that you can apply for. Um, do you want to elaborate a little bit more on the grant? Yeah, yeah. so for Google Ads grants, it's, it's a really awesome program for nonprofits. You do have to qualify, so you can't be like, you know, you can't be like a hospital, you can't be an, edu an education company. But um, if you qualify, you can get up to $10,000 of Google ads spend a month, which is actually insane. That, that's, that, that's a lot of money. So what you can do is you're able to you know, write ads, you know, get more donations, get more uh, eyes on your website, get more brand awareness. So it's a really good program for you to apply to. So that's something you know, that's a great option as well if you're a nonprofit and you're looking you know, to, to, to not necessarily blow up, but, you, but just gradually increase your uh, brand awareness. Our next website traffic channel we'll be discussing is referral. As the name suggests, this is just people coming to your website from another website, another source, kind of they saw your name. So common iterations we see of this are like guest blogging. Uh, a couple other ways to improve your referral traffic is be active on industry forums. So if you're some kind of manufacturing, uh, kind of finding those industry platforms or educational resources and then be, be it doing like a guest blog. Uh, promoting somehow on there, kind of writing in industry forums, then that way people see your name, they click on it, they go to your website, they kind of see you're established in the industry, you know what you're talking about, things like that. Another easy thing to do is get listed on local directories. Uh, this is especially helpful for any kind of like e-commerce or even just like local services too. So yeah. getting yourself on not just like Google My Business, but like the local yellow pages, yeah. all, whatever, the pages that kind of people go to for like local maybe even like yelp yeah. things like that nowadays you um your uh if you're in a city with a area with an area of commerce a chamber of commerce sorry i can't speak today if you're in a city with a chamber of commerce like we're in Ames, so there's the Ames chamber of commerce that's a great website to be mm -hmm. on because uh, a lot of people go to that website and then that that kind of funnels up so mm -hmm. yeah, sorry to interrupt okay. <laughs> No, that's definitely a great way to do it. And then another popular one too is if you're able to cross market with uh, some other relevant company who's similar to you in some regard, uh, cross marketing can be really beneficial too. And that can be more than just guest blogging on their website. That can be, uh, you know, running some kind of promotion together where they're, they're your co-branding. So they're seeing their customers are seeing a brand they know and love and then seeing your brand and being like, oh, well, you know, if they work with them or if they got, they trust them, you know, maybe I should check them out. So there's a lot of different, obviously, opportunities for cross promotion, cross marketing. The difficulty just lies in finding those brand partners to work with, but it's an extremely beneficial way to get that trust of their existing customers right off the bat and kind of work for there. So whatever kind of referral traffic you try might depend on your industry. But there's a lot of different avenues to pursue and you can kind of play around with it and try getting listed on a couple local directories and then checking in GA4 and seeing, okay, did that do anything? If not, maybe then I try to like reach out to someone about guest blogging or people reading the blog, things like that. And just kind of as with any of these strategies, just mess around and do a little bit of A-B testing. Try something, uh, make sure it's working. If it is, keep doing it. If it's not, try a different avenue. Uh, our last and maybe one of the easiest channels to discuss is social traffic. Uh, another one that's pretty true to the name is people coming to your website from any of your social media platforms. There's just the kind of foundations of 
that you should be doing, whether or not you're trying to improve your traffic from social media, you know, you want to have at least a couple social channels. Uh, we come across a lot of industries who think, oh, you know, I am a doctor's office. I don't really know that I need to have an Instagram or I'm a service. I don't know that I need to have a YouTube. Uh, we always say that, you know, it's always better to have more than one channel and the way you present your content varies by channel. And there's always a way you could kind of work it in there. So, you know, if you're a YouTube video or if you have a YouTube and you're a service, you can, you know, discuss your services, show an example of your services, have a video of your providers, your team. There's always some way you could work your content to fit any platform. So, you know, Facebook is the just pretty standard one that like is applicable for any industry. But, you know, there's LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, everything that you, Vimeo, a million things you can choose and not saying make a million social platforms, but, you know, try to have more than once here, at least trying to hit some different audiences, try out some different content. Uh, along with that goes consistent posting schedule, variety of posts, you know, switch it up with graphics, testimonials, some behind the scenes content, promotions, real people photos, so you're giving people varied content. Uh, and then in terms of increasing your traffic to your website, specifically from social, you want to make sure you're including links back to your website as often as possible. Uh, so in Facebook posts, if you're posting about one of your services, link to the service page. If you have a sale, link to that page that the sale is on or the product. Uh, a lot of people tend to just say, visit our website for this and then not put the link. Uh, people tend to just be a little more keen to click and actually go to the website if you just have the link right there. Uh, another thing along with that is in Instagram, you'll notice when you put a link in the caption, it's not clickable like it is on Facebook. So sometimes people just throw the link in there and you can't really click it and people might not be as apt to copy paste. So what we always recommend is having a link tree in your bio. And oh, then, yeah. yeah, it's extremely helpful. We have one on our Instagram and we've noticed it's kind of helped drive a lot more social traffic. So having, you obviously, again, as with any of these, don't want it to be too overwhelming, but having a link tree that, you know, it's got your homepage, it's got your services list, it's got your blog, it's got maybe your other social channels, things like that, just so that you're really giving them the opportunity to be able to see everything in one place, click easily and get to the website. So linking back to your website as often as possible, and then also making sure to switch up what pages you're linking to. So don't always link just to the homepage or just to the schedule an appointment or contact page. Uh, switch it up a little bit, and then as with any strategy, always you want to be tracking performance metrics, engagement. Uh, with any traffic channel, you know, it's quality over quantity. You would rather have 100 website visitors from social who actually like bought a product or signed up for a service than have 10,000 and no one did anything. So you want to be driving quality traffic and not just looking at, okay, so I got 100 website visitors from social. That's great. Is it great? You know, you want to be able to make sure that they're actually completing a conversion. They're doing something by visiting your website. So if you're generating a lot of traffic but not generating leads, you might want to kind of rethink, okay, is my content not engaging enough? Am I not presenting my products or services in the right way? You want to make sure you're getting quality traffic that's actually resulting in what you want it to result in. And probably the worst uh, channel for you to look at on your uh, Google Analytics page is having the uh, dreaded unassigned traffic. That basically means that Google has no idea where that traffic is coming from. So I would say, um, you know, this was really easy to deal with back in Universal Analytics because in, in Universal Analytics, you had a really awesome feature where you could create custom channel groupings where you could define, okay, traffic from here goes into this channel and traffic from here goes into that channel. You can't do that on GA4 anymore, unfortunately. So I will say the first step uh, to sort of, you know, uh, solve this is to, whenever you're, you're building out UTM codes, if you're on a UTM code generator, always make sure that your campaign and your channels are defined and defined properly and make sure you always do that. Like if you're sending out a monthly email, make sure that um, in your campaign name you have, uh, you know, a consistent name so sometimes you know if you send out a monthly email in January if you if you spell email with a small e and no dash for February make sure you're also spelling it with a small e and no dash because then you're really um, causing just a lot of confusion and haywire mm -hmm. on your uh, channels page so I would say that's the best thing you can do to keep track of where your your um, your traffic is going 
And I guess my piece of advice is that uh, it's very hard to get rid of the unassigned traffic because there's no way for you to keep track of you know all the traffic that's coming to your website. So uh, sometimes it's just it's just going to be some traffic that falls through the cracks and gets defined as unassigned. As frustrating as that is, just um, take precautions that you can and uh, do all the steps that you can to make sure that you're accounting for all types of traffic. So just, you know, uh, define your UTM codes properly, define your campaigns properly, define your channels properly, and from there, uh, you should be good. But sometimes um, some traffic falls through the cracks. You know, you get referral traffic from weird sites and it doesn't count. You know, it's, there's just a lot of uh, factors to account for. And I hope that, you know, as GA4 evolves, we'll, you know, we'll get some sort of the custom channel grouping feature that we didn't get. Um, right now so that's something for us to look forward to but for now that's kind of all we can do unfortunately but you know, yeah. it's not the end of the world yeah and as we kind of mentioned earlier um organic is obviously something you always want to focus on we get the question a lot you know what channel should i be focusing on what channel is right for my business you know the answer isn't that simple you, ideally you'd be putting some effort into every single one of these channels with the caveat being paid, you know, so not every business can afford, like Christian mentioned earlier, some keywords are crazy expensive, uh, ad spend can sometimes rack up really quick, so there's a little bit of a caveat on paid uh, if you can't afford it or it's just not the right time for you, that's totally fine, but organic, direct, referral, and social should always be ongoing efforts. Uh, I tend to lean a little bit, little bit more towards organic and social because, you know, they're easy uh, in today's world. SEO and social media are ongoing, consistent, dynamic, and pretty fairly expected. It's kind of odd to find a company who doesn't have any form of social media. Yeah. Uh, and then if you're not doing any kind of organic efforts ongoing, you're rarely never going to see the results you want. So those two are extremely important, but all the traffic channels need to be tied together and kind of have a cohesive and dynamic and kind of well-rounded out, rounded out digital marketing strategy, if you just really hyper fixate on one or two traffic channels, you're not going to get the kind of robust results and tangible engagement that you really want. So, you know, try out a little bit of everything. Constantly refine your strategy. Use those tracking metrics. Uh, use UTM codes. See what's working. See what's not. Just kind of continually refine everything and maybe start by, if any of these traffic channels that we've discussed you're not really focusing on right now, uh, maybe just start there. Pick one thing you can kind of do in that traffic channel area to improve it and just see how the results work. Go from there. Start small and just continually make little tweaks as you have time. Keep working on it and just as always track the results. Yeah, so uh, with that I would say, um, you know, happy channel tracking and just make sure that all your ducks are in a row when you're uh, looking at analytics and preparing uh, new campaigns and you know preparing your your uh, social schedule and stuff like that so that's my final word of advice be sure to check out the full blog on our website we'll have it linked below and we'll see you next time on get a grip bye